Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to show you how to play Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. So this is a deck building game that is very thematic and it's based on the alien movies. I think it's good whether or not you like aliens, but I do, and this game is a ton of fun. So let's check it out. So setup for Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game, is actually pretty simple largely um, thanks to this awesome playmat that does come with the game. And um, it has like just a little section for everything. So it's pretty easy to get this game set up. I will warn you though, that when you first get the game, the cards as they are in the box are horribly organized and you should expect to spend a considerable amount of time sorting them. And then once they're sorted, please try to keep them sorted or else it's a huge pain in the rear to try to set the game back up. So I've set up this game uh, based on the first Alien movie. And what that means is that I have objectives and cards in this Hive deck that are going to play out basically according to the plot line of the first movie. And that has affected the cards that I've put out on the board, so to speak. So I have three objectives and we'll zoom in on them now. So for objective one, I need to find both parts of the SOS. And then the event is a rough landing. You and the next player will each draw a strike. So basically what that means is that if I draw an event card from the hive deck and reveal it, then I and the next player will each draw a strike. But what's interesting is this says bind both parts of the SOS. How do I do that, you might ask? Well, it's all in the deck as I'm going to show you. The second objective is no one can hear you scream. So I have to figure out how to block the ventilation shafts Again, if you see an objective and you're not totally sure what to do, you can actually trust that the game is going to teach you as you go so you don't have to worry. And then for this one, I'll have to find and kill the perfect organism. In other words, we are basically mirroring the plot of the first film. Each of those objectives actually comes with a set of cards that match them. And that is going to make up what's called the hive deck. So I'm gonna show you that up close just so you can understand how the game is working when you set it up. So our hive deck is actually made up of cards that match each objective. So if you look very closely here, let's see if I can get to focus. See how it says the SOS one? All of the objectives cards that go with the SOS will be labeled this way. So it's actually easy to find them, sort them and shuffle them. And then if you look through, you'll find some enemies, hazards and events, which do different things, um, which we'll talk about in a second. And then, oh look, a part of the SOS. So if I'm looking for the SOS, what I'm actually doing is hunting through the objective cards until I find what I'm looking for. Similarly, for objective two, we were talking about how do I block a ventilation seal? Well, when you find the right card, it will actually have instructions on it that tell you what to do. So even if you're playing for the first time and you're not feeling completely secure, there's actually no reason to worry because the game will teach you on its own. So to build up that hive deck, here are the objective three cards. You just shuffle them, put them there, take the objective two cards, shuffle them, put them there, take the objective one cards, shuffle them, and put them on top. And that's, that's all you have to do to set up the hive deck. You pick your objectives and you can actually mix and match objectives to create different games. You don't have to follow the movie plot. You just pick the objective card and you put the cards that go with that into the hive deck. This face up deck right here, this is the hatchery deck. You don't really need to like shuffle it or anything. All it is is for face huggers. There will be cards that tell you to take a face hugger and put it in front of you or put it somewhere else and you take it from the hatchery. Face huggers, if you can't get rid of them, turn into chest bursters, which are almost certainly a death sentence as anyone who's seen Alien will know. Also, this art is just delightful. So let's move down to some other decks. This is the location. So for the first movie of Alien, your location is the Nostromo, the ship. Um, and it will tell you what different hazards are depending on what objective you're on. So if you draw a hazard card, this is where you go to find out what to do when you draw one. Over here, we have what's called the strike deck. So basically every time you get hit by an alien and have to draw a strike card, um, you will draw from this deck. So sometimes it's something really terrible. And then other times you might have like a close call where you don't take any damage whatsoever. 
So you are basically taking a little bit of a risk every time you draw off the strike deck. And um, sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes you get a really nasty hit and that's just part of the fun of the game. And then down here, what we have are some cards that are going to help us. These are the cards that you can actually purchase to add to your deck. This is after all a deck building game. So these are the guys you fight. These are the injuries you take. Here's your objective. Here's your location. And then these are the cards you can buy. So I've taken the liberty of filling up the HQ, which is basically your market row, and it's filled from this deck. So in order to create your market deck, all you need to do is choose four characters who will have their own sets of cards from the box. So in this case, we have chosen characters that are from the first Alien movie. So as you can see, we have Chief Engineer Parker, Warrant Officer Ripley. You can actually play with all four Ripleys from the different Alien movies if you want to, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, Captain Dallas, another Chief Engineer card, and Navigator Lambert. So there are actually sets of characters from each of the films that you can mix and match to your heart's content in order to create your market deck. And this little deck over here, it says Sergeant. So these are cards that anybody can buy and they see how they say Sergeant. They're just different sergeants with different symbols on them. So one thing that you will notice if you play this game enough is that matching symbols really matter. So for example, in some cases, if this symbol matches the symbol on another card, you're going to be able to get a special effect of some kind. So for example, this sergeant has this symbol, which matches this first aid warrant, warrant officer Ripley card. That means that if you play this one first and then play this card, you can heal a strike from any player. So basically it allows you to do extra stuff in addition to paying using the values on the card. The sergeant also has something called coordinate. In this game, one of the things that's very interesting and why you should always basically play two-handed is that that way you can use coordinate powers. So this sergeant can be played on the other player's turn in order to increase recruit value, which is pretty great. And as with most deck builders these days, there are two main currencies. So as you can see, this three, this is combat, as you can see by the slashing symbol here and the price is going to be six recruit to buy it. The stars are recruit, so this is worth two recruit and the card costs three. So that's the main board layout. So what do you start with? You get to start with characters who give you just a little bit of customization to your opening hand, even at the very beginning of the game. So in this little sample set of turns, we're gonna play as two different characters. The first is the mercenary. So as you can see, the mercenary, so this is when you're playing um, in a multiplayer game, so don't worry about this, but he has 11 HP, and we know that you start the game with ready for anything in your deck. So what ready for anything allows you to do is to draw a card, and then this turn you may spin recruit as if it were attack. So he is really good at combining all of the cards in his hand to basically do monster damage to people. Well, aliens. The rest of the cards in his hands are just starter cards. So you have seven specialists, yeah, and five grunts. So each specialist gives you one recruit, each grunt gives you one attack. Our other character is the medic. He's got 10 HP and he starts with Battlefield Medicine in his deck. So when you pull Battlefield Medicine and play it, you can draw a card and then you may heal a strike from any player. So that's also a pretty useful special card to have. Other than that, his starting deck is just the same as the other characters. So this is just the starter set of cards. Seven specialists, five grunts. So now that we're all set up, the order of play is actually pretty simple. And there's actually, um, you can't see it, but there's a little turn order reference in the bottom right corner of the play mat, which is super handy. But essentially, at the beginning of every single turn, let's just say the medic goes first since he's on my left, you move a card into the complex. Note, by the way, see how this is scan two, two, three, three, four? All the cards that enter the complex start out face down. You have to scan in order to flip them over and see what's there. And sometimes bad things happen when you do that. Other times it gives you a little more time to prepare for an attack. If cards get pushed all the way down into the combat zone, they're revealed no matter what, and so you may get a nasty surprise if you don't plan ahead and check out what is up here. So for this turn, you draw six cards every turn. Our medic has drawn 
four recruit, and two attack. These two attack can't really do anything. That's totally useless. So what's going to happen is that we are just going to put those down because as with any deck builder, you go through your whole hand. And then we have four recruit, so we can figure out what we might like to buy. So right now there are three cards that the medic can buy. We can buy repair the ship. So when you draw a new card, new hand at the end of the turn, the power, if the power station is clear, you can draw an extra card. So this is the power station. Um, for captain of the ship, um, if there's a symbol match, uh, you get some combat and it also adds combat. So it's two plus. In other words, it starts as a base of two, but you can add a little bit more if there's a matching symbol. And then first aid words, Officer Ripley is worth two. And also you can heal a strike from any player if you have this matching symbol on one of your cards. For example, if you draw the right Sergeant card. So which of these seems like a good buy? Let's get a little bit more attack power. I'm gonna go ahead and spin these specialists on repair the ship. So these will go into my discard. I'll immediately refill. And that was my whole turn. There's really nothing else that I can do. So my medic is going to draw six more cards. Still haven't drawn my special, that stinks. So now I have three recruit and three attack and we'll see what happens next turn. So now it's going to be the mercenary's turn. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move another of these cards into the complex. So I still don't know what's up here. I know that I'm looking for parts of the SOS, but we'll see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is I have this ready for anything card. I'm gonna go ahead and play it, which allows me to draw another card. Oh geez, I have all my specialists, but I can spend specialty stars as if they were combat. That is the special ability of this card. So that means that I essentially have one, two, three, four, or five, six combat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spend three of those to scan this power station and see what we get. Ooh, it's an event. So now that I've turned over this event card, I have to, um, I have to do the event that's on the objective. And what the objective says is rough landing. You and the next player each draw a strike. So that's what we're gonna have to do. So I'm gonna draw a strike. No, I took a flesh wound. So I've got one damage over here. And then the medic's gonna have to draw a strike. No, he also got a flesh wound, so I'll put that under his character card. Now everybody is down by one HP. It could be worse, but it stinks. And then I have these three cards left. I can use them either to buy stuff or to... I mean, I can't really attack this. This will just go into the discarded enemy pile because we played it. So why don't we go ahead and buy first aid or an Officer Ripley because we can. We'll purchase something. And that was my entire turn as the mercenary. So now it's once again the medic's turn. And here's my hand. I had three, um, three recruit and three attack. So let's see what's gonna happen. The first thing you do, of course, is the hive phase. Yikes. And then I have this stuff to work with. So the question is, do I want to spend these three attack? If I do it, I risk pulling a face hugger and not being able to do anything about it, which is something I'm going to show you momentarily no matter what. All right, let's just go ahead and see what happens. I mean, this is after all an instructional game. So let's play these three combat to scan this room and see what happens in this power station. Oh no, it's a hazard. Okay, so to decide what you do for a hazard, we're still in objective one. And what that means is that we are gonna look at hazard number one on the Nostromo. So what that means is that we are gonna add two hive cards to the complex. So we, instead of having to go another couple turns before hive cards go into the complex, are gonna have two more kind of snake in over here. So this will go to discard, but we're gonna add two more hive cards 
to the complex, which means that our situation just got a bit more dangerous. Now we have three recruit. I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy you have your orders because it lets you look at the top two cards of the barracks and put one on the bottom and one back on top. Sometimes there are situations where you have to add face huggers to the barracks. So having this card could be good because I can check for danger before drawing another card. So that'll go to the discard. This will refill. And I only have one card left in my draw pile. So I'm gonna reshuffle all my other cards and draw back up to six. So now the medic has his hand of six cards and he's going to just kind of hang out through the sergeant's next, I mean the mercenary's turn. So rather than do a full playthrough because it can take a pretty long time, I just want to show you a couple of other basic aspects of this game so that you can get started on your own and enjoy playing. The first thing I need to show you is how face huggers work because they are going to show up. There are various cards that you can pull that will cause you to put face huggers in different places. So you can either pull one off of the hive deck or you can be forced to shuffle them into things like even your barracks deck, which means that you can be thinking that you'll just get another awesome Warren Officer Ripley, but instead a face hugger jumps out and grabs your face. So if you get a face hugger in front of you, let's say that the medic has a face hugger. You only have your turn and the next player's turn to do something about it. So right now, this face hugger has three attack, uh, three attack cost to kill it, but I only have two in this hand. All this other stuff, I mean, I could maybe like draw a card and look for it. So let's say that I did that and I would have gotten it. So this is three attack. If you have three attack, you can just spend it to get rid of the face hugger. But let's say that I didn't do that because I figured the other guy can take care of it. If, if you can't take care of it on your turn and the next person can't take care of it on their turn, although fortunately he could have, no problem. But if you can't kill it on the turn that you get it or on the next player's turn, then it turns into a chest burster. And so that means that you get rid of the face hugger, but you have to pull out a chest burster and shuffle it into your draw deck, which means that eventually, and probably not very long from then, you are going to gain this card and basically die. So when you gain this, kill all face huggers in front of you. While this is in your discard pile, enemies won't strike you and new face huggers will jump onto the next player because they know that you're about to be part of the family, ha ha ha. When you draw this, however, you suffer extreme pain and die. So getting a chest burster is horrible and you never want it to happen, which means that you need to get face huggers out of the way, either on the turn that you get it or on the next player's turn. Otherwise, death. The other thing I want to show you is coordinate. Let's once again pretend that it's the medic's turn, but this is the mercenary's hand. He has a card that says coordinate on it. So let's say that my mercenary, I mean my medic would really like to buy somebody expensive. So we have one, two, three, four, five recruit points, but maybe I want to buy It's a Damn Robot and I need some extra recruit. So what I'm gonna do is I can actually play this coordinate card to increase my recruit power to seven and buy this card. Even better, when you play coordinate card, you get to draw a replacement from your draw deck. So you can just pull another card. It doesn't actually handicap you for your next turn. It's just pure help. So then he gets his coordinate card back to his discard pile. I would get my It's a Damn Robot card and everybody goes on happily. So coordinate is actually very, very useful because it truly is coordination. You get to draw back up to your hand limit. You don't lose anything by helping somebody else. It's a net good. Just an FYI, by the way, you can only coordinate one card to another player per turn. So if I had two cards in this hand that said coordinate, I could only choose one to use. So that's really it for a basic rundown of Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building adventure. Um, it's a great game. It's one of the most thematic deck builders I've ever played. And once you get into the groove of playing, you're gonna really have a great time. It's especially good if you like the alien movies, but even if you don't, 
the tension of knowing that there's a face hugger in front of you and you really need to get rid of it or else you will surely die is very exciting, even in board game form. I like a lot of board games, but I particularly like this one. So I really hope that you give it a shot. Happy gaming.